Hey, what's going on guys? It's Luke. And today I want to talk about tuning drums. Tuning drums, I think, is one of those details that marks the difference between an amateur producer and somebody who feels like they're actually starting to be in control of making some proper music. And if you're someone who's interested in the exact details that will help you start evolving from an amateur to the professional that you want to be, Go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I have a direct focus on these exact points because I've had to learn them through experience myself and I'm working on bringing you as many of those lessons as I possibly can. Anyway, let's talk about drums. When it comes to tuning, of course, there's no one way to do things and if you're the type of person who just likes to use your ear and not even measure specifically the key of drums that you're using and they sound good to you, then more power to you. But the way that I use tuning drums, especially when I started out as a producer um, and when I was in the stage of really starting to feel like I was progressing as a producer, I used tuning drums as kind of a layer of confidence in my track that if nothing else, at least my drums were meshing um, musically and harmonically. Because before I learned to tune drums specifically, I had this feeling of kind of ambiguity around my drums and that I might not have been super confident about how they fit together. So all in all, I think that tuning your drums can be used as kind of a practice to help you feel like there's one less thing wrong with your song. Because if you knock out tuning your drums, you at least know that that is not the problem that you're hearing um, when you're trying to fix your song or fix your mix. So first off, how do you even figure out what note a drum is playing? Well, you may be familiar with the Ableton tuner, and you might also be familiar with the fact that it is only suitable for a couple applications. One, I think it does work for um, 808s, mainly because of the long sustain of the note. Um, shorter, snappier drums like snares and hi-hats generally won't get picked up by the tuner. So usually I can pretty much count on uh, the Ableton tuner to work on 808s if I needed to tune them. Um, usually the 808s that I'm working with are labeled pretty accurately. So I at least know what I'm getting into and maybe I'll pitch them up a semitone or two or, or down. But anyway, we're not even really talking about 808s. While they are kind of a drum, they really belong more to um, the even more melodic category than drums do. So we're talking more specifically about the percussive elements of your drum groove, such as kicks, claps, and hats. So let's say I slap this tuner onto the kick that I have. And nothing's getting picked up by the tuner. Hey, what's up? Say hello to YouTube. Just kidding, I'll throw you a little feature. No. Thus, I'm going to introduce a couple more tools that you can use to measure your drums tuning on a more precise level. Number one is probably the plugin that I've clicked most times out of anything, and it's literally the only plugin in its category. It's a plugin by Melda Production called M Analyzer. M Analyzer is a spectrum analysis tool that highlights um, musical keys that are being picked up as the dominant frequencies of a sound that's going into it. So here's what it looks like when I put my kick into it. And sometimes you have to tweak the settings in order to view enough information um, because sometimes if you play just a tiny little clip, um, the peaks will go down too fast. So rather than getting a spazzy peak like this, averaging can allow you to just see a more complete picture of what's in the entire uh, sample. So what I usually do, especially if it's hard to see right off the bat, is I just repeat um, and loop a uh, section of a lot of the drums so that way I can get a good idea of what's going on. So that'll look like this. So we basically have an F going on. Now this song is an F sharp, so I'm gonna need to nudge that a little bit, um, but we'll get there in a second. 
but things aren't always as simple as just seeing a very defined peak in your sample and immediately knowing what key your sample's in. Sometimes your samples are muddied up with a lot more frequencies. That happens a lot in snares um, and in like noisy open hi-hats and stuff. So I want to apply um, the M analyzer to some more samples and kind of just check out what we have going on there. And then um, we'll move into some more techniques on how to identify and then change your key as well. So I'm doing the same process again. So when you turn smoothness all the way down and it doesn't average out the peaks into what it decides is the key, um, you get this mess. And when you look at it, it doesn't make you that confident that the average answer is going to be actually correct. So in some cases, it's better to just observe these peaks um, under an even more microscopic lens. So one way you can do this is also pretty much an alternative to M analyzer. It works a little bit differently, but it is the Ableton spectrum. And you can expand this with the arrow upwards. So to me, the fundamental frequency is going to be right here. And so you can also look at the <clears throat> readout down here, which will indicate what octave and what note you're hitting on a drum. So the fundamental, which is what you're looking for, is going to be the peak that shows up in the lowest frequency possible. So like we see some peaks up here too, but this would be the fundamental because it's the first peak um, that we see. And we're looking at a D sharp. So in order to get an F sharp to match my key, um, what I could do is click on my sample and transpose it up to semitones. But it looks like I'd need to go up a little bit higher. So that means a few cents. So now we're at F sharp. I should add to that, in case you've never heard of this, the rule that I use and that a lot of people use, I think, is to keep your kicks tuned at the root note and to keep your claps or snares tuned at the fifth of your scale um, of the key that you're in. But again, there is no wrong answer as this is an art after all. So as long as you know how to tune in general, you can mess with whether your snares and claps are on the root as well as your kick or also on the third or on the fifth or seventh or whatever. But I think just the most straightforward rule that I mess with is um, kick on the root, clap on the fifth. So let's say I wanted to tune this snare to the fifth of my F sharp scale, which is a C sharp. Um, what I could do is click on the audio sample and transpose it up as many semitones um, as it would take. Anyway, I'm not even gonna be tuning the drum with this method, I'm just trying to prove a point. So here's my drum when it started out. Now I'm increasing it by a semitone each time. You can tell that the character and integrity of the drum is just deteriorating with every semitone it goes up. So this is actually not that effective of a way to tune your drums because essentially if you need to go more than a few semitones away, I mean a few, more than like one or two, your sample's definitely not gonna be the way that you liked it. Like the reason that you liked it was because it had a certain character and now you're just doubling the frequencies too many times and just deteriorating it. So the improved way of tuning a drum for this scenario that we're going to cover is using the frequency shifter. So let's slap one of those on our clap track. So the way that the frequency, so the way that the frequency shifter so let me try to explain why the frequency shifter method is so different and better in most cases than using the um, transpose knob. The frequency shifter is going to nudge your audio higher or lower in frequency value just by a number of hertz, as opposed to the way that the transpose knob works is let's say you turn the knob 12 semitones to make your sample an octave higher 
<clears throat> every single frequency value that exists inside that sample is going to be doubled. And in the high frequency ranges, <clears throat> that basically takes so much of it away. Because in the high frequency ranges, for that frequency to be doubled means that there is no value that can even be audible to the human ear on which that sample can then lie. So in other words, using the frequency shifter to tune the fundamental of your drum will maintain most of the integrity of your original sample, whereas using the transpose method pretty much just deteriorated it into something that was unrecognizable from the original one. And that is possible because small frequency changes in hertz values in lower octaves result in a more pronounced change in note value than they do in higher frequency ranges. So you can move the fundamental around without really changing the high end information. So let's say you had to adjust your kick by six hertz to move it into a different note value. Well, six hertz when relative to the fact that you're in the 10,000 hertz range won't affect the note value of material in that end of the spectrum. I'd also like to note that Pro-Q3 is a great plugin for monitoring um, frequency shifting into different note values. So I'm gonna keep both Ableton Spectrum and Pro-Q3 up so that both owners of Pro-Q3 can follow along and people who only have access to the Spectrum Analyzer in Ableton um, can also follow along. So in order to tune a drum with the frequency shifter method, you're gonna have to find your fundamental on the frequency spectrum, and then find the frequency value of the new note that you need to tune it to. And then the difference between those two Hertz values is gonna be what we plug in to shift our frequency towards the note that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice tuning this snare for you guys. So first we have to find out where we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and say we're at a D. Now we want to get to a C sharp, so I'll probably pitch down. So there's our two differences. We have 1239 and 1108. So the difference between those is 131 and I'm going down. So I'm gonna type minus 131 into my frequency knob. And then um, let's see if we can find the new note that it's hit on. And on Pro-Q3, these numbers minus 40, minus 21, plus 18, those are all sense that um, each peak is off tuned by. So if you want to be dead on in the middle of the note that you want, you need to fine tune until um, those numbers get as close to zero as possible. So anyway, I've gotten my drum tuned to C sharp and I realize I did that on fab filter only. So let's just review inside the Ableton spectrum analyzer. What you're going to do if you use this, is you're going to find the fundamental and then you're going to read the Hertz value that is displayed in the lower left hand corner of the display. And then you're gonna put your mouse where your fundamental currently is and then where you want it to go and then do the math and then use your frequencies and then use your frequency shifter to move your fundamental to its new place. Now on the same vein, I have one last tip for you guys before we get going. You can use these note values on your EQ to add new focal points on note values that you want to accentuate in your drum. So let's say that I don't have enough low end that is expressing the note that I want. What I can do is find my C sharp, which is where I was tuning this um, snare at. And then I can add some more meat by turning up this section of the frequency spectrum to add a little bit more bite to the lower C sharp. So let's say you have a sample where the frequency information just seems relatively flat and you can't even delineate where the fundamental is. You can create your own fundamental 
by creating a little bump in your EQ right on top of the Hertz value where your note resides. And the sky's the limit with this method. If you feel like really accentuating a certain note in a sample, you can create bumps all along different octaves wherever you want your notes to be hitting. So guys, I really hope you learned something today to raise your confidence level as a producer. Please let me know if there's anything I can clear up for you. And please let me know if there's anything specific that you are struggling on in general in your production career. Um, I'd love to help you out if I can and make a video for you. Also, please like and subscribe to stay up to date. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.